heaven. I think I died and went to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Hopefully a quick one here today, but every time I seem to say that, we get ourselves into a big, nightmarish pile of trouble. Today that pile of trouble literally starts in a pile of troubled machines. Specifically this one right here, a Honda 200X three-wheeler. The only thing I know about this is I bought it from a guy who found it in a barn. The engine is seized and it's a Honda. Good recipe for both disaster and success. Let's see what we get. Ezra. How are you today? I'm doing really good. Of course you are. You're standing in a shed full of three-wheelers. Yes. Mm. <laughs> There's so many good parts. I love it. As mentioned, what we're here for today is this, a Honda 200X. The Honda 200X is unique in a lot of ways that we'll get into, but for now, let's get this sucker dug out and in the truck and in the shed where it's warm. Because it is windy as hell and cold as shit here in Iowa. November. These are some interesting wheels on the back of this one. Looks like lawnmower tires. Someone trying to do some flat track stuff cheap. Flat track in the grass, because lawnmower. Oh, yeah. This original seat is Oh, yeah. She's sticky. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I'm glad I brought help. I mean, on screen talent. <laughs> yep, she's pretty straight. Pretty good looking bike. Let's get her loaded up. Get her home. All right. Here we are in the shed. That took a little longer than anticipated. It's like, I don't know, Seven 10 hours later. Yeah, it feels that way. We've remodeled the shed though. It's all cleaned up, good to go. Had the a three, delicious meal. A delicious meal on top of the stove, which by the way, we have one of these now. So we have a nice warm place to work on three wheelers and snowmobiles this winter. This is finally well lit and up at the camera's height. So you guys can see what the hell we're doing and my back doesn't scream at me all day. With that being said, the 200X is up on the operating table. This motor is currently seized. I believe the guy I bought it from said he separated the top and bottom end and somehow it spun. I don't, I don't actually know, but carburetor's off. The head is loose. All the mounts for the motor are loose. So it looks like step one might be pull that sucker out of there and start working on it. Mm -hmm. All right, Ezra has begun on the motor mounts. I'm gonna figure out how to, there we go. Get the plastics out of here. Pretty darn good shape. No cracks in the seat. No cracks in the plastic. Damn, this might be too nice for me. Foot pegs off this side. Front mount is off. We got this bolt and this bolt. Chain's already been taken off. That one's loose, you can pull that up. There you go. That red frame is interesting. That's how the 350X is too. Is it really? Yep. Right. 250R as well. So all the race machines. Yep. Which, as we're going through this, you got to give us a history. Yeah. What, what is the 200X a thing? What's the story here? The uh, the 200X came out in 1983. It was the first uh, four-stroke sport trike Honda ever made. And essentially what it is, is in the early 80s, people were taking the 185 and 200, just the normal ATC or, or the 200S, 185S, and um, beefing up with suspension. Essentially, the 200X was born from Honda. This trike, the 200, has so much racing history. If uh, anybody is interested in that, if you look up the name Mickey Dunlop, he raced these, and he worked for a company called Power Roll that made a whole bunch of speed parts in the 80s for these things to race. They were doing stadium tracks and stuff like that. One of my favorite pieces of history about this particular motor, which just says, hell yes, horsepower, right? This four stroke, this thumper, raced against the uh, two strokes back in the early days of racing. They, they just mixed the classes. Early air cooled 250Rs? Yes, yep. So the cool part was with enough cam compression, flow, jetting, everything, enough waking this motor up, you could push one of these oil four strokes so hard against an air cooled 250 two stroke <laughs> that the 250 air cooled would seize and this just oh. mighty thumper would beat them so in a track. He pushed them so hard he'd burn their motors up and then go around them. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of good stories about Mickey Dunlop. He also states that his 200X was piped so loud for horse, you know, had it was so modded. When the, the TV crew was recording the race in the 80s, they would get mad at him because his pipe was so loud and a two stroke wasn't nearly as loud, so it would interrupt their microphones when they were recording the races. <laughs> so no matter who they were filming, you just heard Mickey on the other side yes. of the track. <laughs> just roaring. <laughs> 
So that's hilarious. Such a, I mean, a first year. This one's a 1983. Such a unique, full of history, awesome trike. Yeah, like like you just said, this is the first year they made these yep. from 83 to 87, correct? Yep. So 1983 to 1985 was this older style 200 cc design, which is straight it, out of a bike. Uh, so when they Honda developed the 200, um, a lot of parts were taken out of the XR XL 200s, obviously. Okay. Um, this 200 platform is a lot, engine-wise, is a lot like just the traditional ATC 200 exhibit over here. Except for dirt bike bottom end. Yep, and uh, yep. so five-speed manual clutch, uh, way more cam, better carb, more flow, obviously. So then in 1986, they redesigned the 200cc engine, and that lasted, obviously, until 87. And then uh, Honda was kind of done with the trike platform. Everyone was, yeah. Government and stepped in and said, no mas. Yep, and I mean, they, they're not illegal, like they're not illegal to make, it's just the United States government speaking with Japan is like, hey, we're no longer gonna buy these because they're dangerous. And Honda's like, you guys are our biggest customer. Okay, we'll not make them anymore. Well, they're they're an animal to ride. They're a handful, and they're so addicting and fun to ride that yeah. way. Biggest trick is staying on ones that you're comfortable with and not getting on a big one and dying. Uh, Don't go straight for a 200 <laughs> or a 2 the R. Yes. When I uh, uh, play in bean fields, build a bean field flat track with my 350X, there's times that I'm leaning so far over on this side of the machine that I want to upshift out of the corner, and my toe will not reach the shifter <laughs> because my leg is in the air hanging over. Just to over. keep her down. Just to keep her down. Well, sweet. Good bit of history. Thank you, Ezra. Let's pull that last bolt and get that motor out of there. Yeah, I'd give you a hand with that, but someone's got to hold this camera. You should be free right now. Oh, that's it. Yeah, something here. Well, there you go. There it goes. <laughs> Ta-da, it's out. Yep. All right, the motor is out. Let's figure out why she doesn't spin. Things I'm seeing right away, as mentioned before, this is all loose. Maybe it was he pulled the top end off just fine and the piston wasn't stuck, but it wanted something down here was stuck? I hope not. I suppose there's only one way to find out. So to move timing on these uh, 200 engines, you can actually loosen this Phillips here and this Phillips here and move this plate around. Um, I kind of like just personally leaving them exactly how Honda sent it out of the factory because it's immortal. There are factory timing marks and I can show those in a second. But I just put a marker like that. Put a marker right here. As long as you're not going to soak these in parts washer fluid and destroy your marker, you'll get it back exactly how you took it apart. Right here is your timing mark. See how this aluminum square little block pokes? Uh -huh. And you have this U right here. So you can loosen these two Phillips and actually move this plate as long as you're within these marks and you can move your timing around a little bit there. And then behind there are mechanical springs for your mechanical advance. So yeah, if you ever had one of these that has good compression, everything else is perfect, she's a little down in power, that might have been moved or even slipped. These Possible. things are so old, who knows how many times they've been apart. Right, well never, it's a Honda. Another interesting thing, the top end oils through one of these studs, right, like this one? I'm not sure oh. exactly which one it is, but one of these studs, they push oil from the bottom end up around one of the uh, cylinder studs and that's how they lube the top cam and uh, rockers. With that being said, make sure your hardware is a sealing washer like this one's a copper washer and an acorn nut with a leak. That's all 200s, I believe. I believe so. Probably all Honda three wheelers. There's a good chance of that. All right. All right, so we got our little ignition cover off and uh, this is actually splined onto the camshaft. Here's your mechanical advance system. You can see the springs and weights kick out. Now if you slide this guy off, um, if you go too fast, you'll miss that this pin is right here. And that pin, during assembly especially, if you're putting a new cam seal in, uh, put the seal in first because that pin can drop down there and fall into your bottom end. This one's a little stuck in there, but usually they just... There we go. Yeah, they yeah. might even fall out on their own, so be careful. That's, that guy is tiny. Is it just one? There's two, right? Two. One, two. Yeah, and then these away. Allens and our valve cover will be off. Hell yeah. Note to self, if you ever take any of this uh, components apart here, and you see oil on your electrical components, uh, that means that that camshaft seal has failed. And that's not good. We'll remove this uh, cover here. Pops off. There's our cam, upper cam sprocket and cam chain. And uh, with uh, some light force, this valve cover should pop right off. So we'll get that guy off here. Oh, she's free. And off it goes. The cam actually doesn't have cam bearings. The cam rides on the aluminum. The aluminum valve cover is machined to house the camshaft. And there's our top end. I mean, from here I don't see anything insane, but we'll keep digging. Uh, tech tip, if you're just doing the top end and you don't want to retime your camshaft, and especially if the engine was already running and you know it's in time, 
You can take a uh, paint marker, preferably a nice bright yellow one or white, you know. Uh, you can mark the cam sprocket to the chain, mark the cam sprocket to the chain, then take a zip tie and go through the bolt hole of the cam sprocket around the chain and hold it really tight. And then when you do that, you can pull the sprocket off and the cam out, then you can just lay your sprocket down in there and pull your top end. There, now the sprocket cannot move timing on the chain. Sweet. <laughs> Hindsight 2020 or 2040, however you see, uh, there's a good chance that this sprocket won't actually clear the valley that the chain goes through, and that was an absolute waste of time because we'll have to take the sprocket out to get the cylinder off. But it's a good tip for someone who's just taking a cam out. I suppose. For whatever reason, you would do that. Head gasket stuff. Oh, um, yep, 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 yep. We'll just retime it. Yeah. Good thing to check anyway. Oh, yeah, this is the only other head bolt. There's the caps for the studs, and then there's that one bolt. That's crazy, that tiny little thing that moves these around at 50, 60 mile an hour just fine. In other news, as you just saw in the background, Phoenix is here now. Yep. Swung by for a beer and three wheelers. Of course. Yep, the piston moves just fine. Cylinder looks excellent, so we got something wrong in the bottom end. We do. Oh, dude, check this out. It moves a little. It's hitting something down in there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the piston's not all the way down, but we have a theory. Yeah, when, when the piston was all the way up, it was like the crank seemed to roll just fine, but the rod on the crank was only going a tiny bit at a time. About that much. And it's like the rod bearing on the bottom was what was binding up and causing this thing to be locked up. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Regardless, we're gonna have to split the bottom cases. All right, crack her open. I think uh, I think your main seal on the crank is gone. There should not be oil in there. That's, that's just black paint. Like, yeah, wipe your finger on that. Oh, well, <laughs> someone did a terrible rebuild. <laughs> there is oil in here, though. Yeah, it is a little wet. but. And if you're splitting the pa cases, you're obviously going to replace that seal anyway. But that seal is leaking. There yeah. should not be any oil in here. Obviously, we're going to replace that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 We definitely that, replaced that all the oil seals. We got, uh, you Were know. you the same? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, down in the shelf. All right, so see how easy the crank moves right now, like effortlessly? But now when I wa like hold the piston the way the cylinder would hold the piston and try to turn it. Oh, jeez. That yeah, rod that's, bearing that's is gone. That's rod bearing for sure. I've never seen that failure before. Wow. These are pressed together cranks, aren't they? Like not something we can. F oh, good, great. Yeah, you're thinking. You're thinking. Mucho dollars. Well, the good news is Phoenix has a 200X up back that can go missing in the dark. <laughs> if we take the engine, you'll be suspicious. But if we take the whole thing, you'll just be regular stolen. <laughs> and then, well, she was bone dry. Not yeah. a drop of oil. It's either been a part before, or I think I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> Ain't got no oil in it. Is that the right tool you're supposed to be using? This is what the manual says. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, safety first. <laughs> Tonight Phoenix is our supervisor. Ezra, the mechanic. And me, the chef. Got some potatoes going here. Everybody's doing a good job. Thank you, supervisor. Yep. Can I get a raise? No. Damn it. <laughs> All right, since there's a special nut that we've run into pretty much immediately, we've crafted this tool that you can buy on Amazon. And if you have the foresight that we don't, do that. But if you're stuck in a pickle like us, I guess you could potentially, yet untested at this moment, potentially cut down a tire iron and then forget how many sides are on a nut and start cutting an octagon instead of a hexagon and wind up with a ha perfect half inch square which fits on a socket as if it was, you know, an impact. But then you can take some nuts and on a bolt and drop them in there. And then take another socket with an adapter or just a socket that fits and drop it on the other side and boom! Then you have whatever this is. $8, $8 tool. tool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works. Alright, you're the chef, I'm the supervisor, you're the mechanic. Yep. Back to it. Ready, switch. Oh. I need to adjust my nuts. Okay, all, how, do you need to adjust yours? I'm good. Okay. Ezra? My nuts are perfect. Sweet, let's do it. 
Oh, sorry. My nuts are all over. I don't love that finish, cue. Yeah, yeah, food's more important. All right, potatoes are good. Back to work. God damn. What? <laughs> what happened? All right, smoke the end of the threads with a hammer so that way they're just completely destroyed. That's not a terrible idea. But if I put the bolt in the other way, I have an adjustable nut. Oh, God, got it! Wow. You don't need no $8 tool, look at that. that. This, this is what we're fighting, by the way. Yes. Look how well Ezra nailed those uh, 90s. That's not, uh, okay, I'm proud it's of myself. It's pretty damn actually, good, though. dude. It's yeah. not even a lot of play. We just gotta do it again now. I want to yeah. raise. <laughs> you gotta talk to the supervisor. I'm the chef again. Can not happening. Raise? Nope. He's oh. <laughs> <laughs> really good at saying that. Do you practice at work? Yeah. Just every morning. <laughs> I'm still on potato slash chef duty. Ezra's our mechanic now. Supervisor. Any instruction? Get her done. If I fail, will you fire me? Yes, absolutely. Can I default to chef instead of being fired? Sure. Yes. I hope this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? No, you didn't mean to. Um, oh. <laughs> He's fired. <laughs> First try. Look at that. This works good. Mm. Permanent new mechanic. Do I have a beer about it? Let's do it. Okay. Hey. <laughs> You gave me one potato for supper the whole time I've been here. You made me sleep in a camper. You get Thanksgiving off. Because <laughs> it's Ow. like tomorrow or something. Three hours away. <laughs> yeah. So this is your clutch basket here. This whole assembly. And this is the basket. Yeah, These this, are your clutch yep. plates. One second. The supervisor is making noise over there. Sorry. Damn it. Okay. I want to so, raise. No. <laughs> um, this friction disc you can see is actually splined in a way to this clutch basket. This here is the basket. This basket is mated to the crank. When I move the basket, the crankshaft moves. And this one right here drives... Is splined, is splined to the basket. that basket, correct. So you know the friction moves when the crankshaft moves, right? Yep. Okay, so we'll set him aside. Our next disc is a steel plate. This steel plate is splined to this inner piece of the clutch the inside hub. Yep, that's what I'll call it, in lack of proper terms. This inside hub is splined to the transmission, right? So this steel disc and this friction disc mate together, just like brake pads mating to a rotor, the friction material bites the steel material under spring pressure, and they bite and they spin one to one. So the crankshaft spins the transmission, right? Now, when I pull in my clutch lever, it takes away the spring pressure, and these guys start to float. When these are floating, see how they slip? They're not biting hard, but when the spring pressure crams them together, this friction disc, much like a brake pad, is going to bite and spin the transmission. And that is how a clutch works. Excellent. And just for visualization's sake, you want to drop this piece Absolutely. into the center to show yep. where that sits. So friction disc, steel disc, friction disc, outer, and now outer I'll, case, inner case, outer case. Yep. And now it's a little, you have to spline them all correctly, right? I mean, it's a little bit of a, a hassle to do, but. But that's where that one goes in. When it's seated yep. all the way, it goes all the way down. Yep. So they rotate independently, and, right? but on one concentric shaft. This is crankshaft, this is transmission, and the plates are what connect them together. That was an excellent demonstration of that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Also, um, on some of these, probably most machines, I'm not sure, but you can yes. just remove these as one big unit. Yes, I uh, disassembled it. Uh, a lot for demonstration purposes of a clutch, but um, you can leave the basket mostly together, take that nut off and lift the whole gear off. And now you don't ever have to worry about it. I like to take them apart to inspect them. Yes. Let's get this case split and see what is wrong with this thing. I still don't see any metal shavings in anything. Nothing looks weird. It looks better than most of the running engines I have. I got the other side gutted and I took all of the case bolts out so our two case halves around the crankshaft can be split right now. I'm going to flip this over. Round of applause. I'm going to start tapping on these shafts and we'll see if we can get these covers split here. Wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to use an actual tool for this? Oh yeah, they make case splitters. Please spend the money and just buy one. Um, Don't tell me it's more than $8 because we what? clearly debunked that to be necessary. This tool, please just go out and buy one. <laughs> 
Torque. I'm the guy that torques every bolt, and I know I'm weird for doing it that way, but you just it, do it right. But here we are. Yeah, Phoenix, do it right. Come on, you're a supervisor. I'm just a chef. <laughs> Yeah, the customer's waiting on this. I want to go home. We have an hour and 43 minutes that this needs to be running. <laughs> we least by midnight or you're fired. Again, uh, by the case puller. If you are doing it this way, don't follow these guys and use one of these. Whoa, whoa, come on, us. Wow. Whoa. Shots taken. Whoa. <laughs> um, before you try and beat these apart, do make sure you have all of the bolts out. I believe I forgot one on this side. <laughs> this frick. Demote them. Demote them that three dollars you said you yep. Can I be no the race. chef? No I raise. No raise. Don't want to be the mechanic anymore. <laughs> oh, there we go. go. All right, what's wrong with it, mechanic? What's broken? I don't know. I need potatoes to paint. Still no metal shavings that I see. Does it spin now? And that rod bearing is not happy, I will say that. Your rod is screwed. This needs Excuse a crank me? kit. I screwed your, I mean, your Whoa. rod got Whoa. in place. I'd like um, to file a report. The rod <laughs> is in the wrong place. I'd like to file two reports. <laughs> two reports. Your rod does not do what it should do. Acceptable. The rod does not move on the crankshaft. I mean, it does lightly, but this but what's, needs. What's stopping the crankshaft? Can this whole thing come out right now? Yes, in theory, uh, hopefully. It might be stuck in the other case. Okay, let me flip this around and I'll try to tap the rod out once. Yeah, look at this. Mm. I am trying to... So, oh, we yeah. a PB blaster in there is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's just rusty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this... I mean, despite what you guys want to do, this needs a crank. <laughs> what do we want to do? We just want to do uh, wheelies needs, by midnight. Come this, on. The crank bearings feel okay. Oh, okay, that's two out of three, I'll take that. And if you think about it, this is going to take most of the stress because the large explosion happening here, which is throwing all of its thrust right here, is taking the most stress. So if you're low on oil, this is more than likely the first part that's going to go. These are all ball bearings, which a ball can roll without oil, Yeah. you know. Um, this is not a ball bearing, this is a plain Oh, that's a normal bushing style. This is a bushing style, and uh, when this sees low oil, it's getting all of the force pushed down on it, and it, this is what's gonna go yeah. first. Well, so here, it's very common. There you go, now run it around. Oh, it's fixed, oh. it's a miracle. Perfect, yep. throw it back together. It turns out the Twisted T makes it twist just fine. <laughs> you do what you wanna do, it's your toy. Um, I don't think we have, <laughs> you have a choice. You're gonna need a crank. Back in the olden days before, uh, before aftermarket kits were readily available, you would have to bring this to Honda and get it pressed apart and pay them hours of labor to press this all apart, redo it, press it all back together, and time it. What was the kit called? Oh, it's uh, nicknamed a wrench rabbit. It's a wrench whole rabbit. box that comes complete with a crank pressed together with bearings. A lot of times you can get a piston and ring set all with it with mm. a gasket kit, and you can overhaul this complete engine. It's only like, what, $500 you said? It's a lot. That's more than I paid for the whole thing, so that sounds about right. But it's the game you play. All right. Well, I'll get one of those ordered up, and we'll see you guys then. Well, that went well. No, I'd say. So as we saw last night, our crank is shot, which sucks. I did hop on eBay and order a used one of these from a different machine for 84 bucks. It should plug in here, but it's going to be a couple weeks before it's here. And we want to get this sucker running and riding so Ezra can go ripping around in the field flat track style. Now to do that, we do have a solution. This is not the only 200X I have. And the other one I have is arguably in much worse shape, but at least a couple years ago it ran. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to town, harvest the motor out of that one, shove it in here, put this back together, stick him on it, and still have some success. Let's go do it. Well, here we are. Uh, parts machine. I guess. This one's also completely buried in the shop and I really can't get to it. So we're gonna borrow that really quick. Eight, 10, 12, 14. That should be everything we need. Oh, hang on. That should be everything we need. Let's get her popped out. Just like that. A couple minutes later. Here, let me give you a hand. Well, we're catching on the shift lever over here. Oh. We're gonna take that off. Think so? Yep. Do we run this down to the car wash and hair with some degreaser? Do a poor man's rebuild? Oh yeah. Gotta rebuild something this weekend. We just took the other engine apart. We could assemble it at the pressure washer. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I mean, that one was just to show people how they work. Yeah. You know, then they'll have better appreciation for seeing this different engine run. 
This is what it would look like <laughs> if, if you just had another one that was cleaner. I'm gonna stick this motor in that chassis that we're working on at the house until all the parts come in and I can like re-gasket and re-ring and do everything to that other 200X and do it right, put that back together in my own time someday, and then take this one back out and shove it back here in this chassis where it belongs. With that being said, this one is out. Let me grab the degreaser. We'll run this down to the car wash, give it a quick bath, and then go throw it in the 200. Wheelies by lunch. Wheelies by, yeah, mid-noon. Mid-noon. <laughs> Midday. It's like, I don't know, 1986 right now. And <laughs> yeah. uh, we're taking the 98. We borrowed our, our dad's car. Yep. Uh, to go buy a new engine for our 200X because last weekend at the track we blew one up. We found a local guy in town that had a 200X and sold us the engine. So tonight we're gonna board it, piston, cam, and she's ready for next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we're living the motocross glory days that we never had. Nope. Engine's all cleaned up. Let's go get the sucker in the chassis. All right, we're back with the 200. She's still up on the bench right where we left it last night. Other motor has been set aside to be assembled at another time when the new parts show up. This one is all cleaned up. Looks way different than it did when it was in the shop. Not a lot of black paint left on it and an interesting amount of red paint on it instead. But this should be a good motor that we ran, what, two years ago I think we rode it? Yeah, I think it was 2021. Just rode it around the parking lot once after I got it and it's been sitting in the back of the F100 ever since. Before that goes in the chassis, however, we want to take a few minutes and degrease the whole thing. As you can see, Edge was already started cleaning this up. I'm gonna hit the airbox on this with some D-germ, hit the tires with some D-germ, get them shined up, clean these rims. This thing's in great shape, it's just really needs a bath, so. Too damn cold outside to run the garden hose. It's well below freezing today. So let's go ahead and I suppose do it by hand. Ready, begin. This is gonna go one of two ways, smooth or not. <laughs> I suppose those are the options. <laughs> all right, trike's all cleaned up. She looks a lot better. A little harsh in this light. I still need to figure out the lighting in this whole shop for filming, but we're working on it. Let's get the motor in there, eh? Ready? All right, how the hell did we do this twice and we still can't figure this out? We should have paid attention at least one of the times. All right, we're hitting the shop again. Oh yeah, rear bolt, that's what it was. That big drain or whatever the hell that is. Cable again. Wow, that's really not a good spot. All right. It's in. Oh, yeah. it is? Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, that was cake. Yeah. All right. Well, Ezra puts the motor mount bolts in there. I will start cleaning the carburetor. Place your bets. It's going to be good. Oh. You were wrong. You were very wrong. All right. Well, I'll get started. I've never seen one caramelized before. It's an interesting color in there. You should see if it tastes like caramel. No, I think I'm good. I think I can, I think I can smell from here that it doesn't. Heck yeah. Feels pretty decent. Yeah. Sounds good. This thing was pretty spicy when we wrote it. In other news, the carburetor's apart. This end cleaned up decent for just the preliminary clean. I'm gonna throw it into the old Behrman's chem dip now and clean it all up and get it reassembled, but moving right along. Motor's all in, time for a chain. Yeah. Sneak her in. She's a, she's a little worn out. Put that on the list of things to replace when I redo this. Yeah, running a worn chain without a, a case saver. There's a metal little bracket right here that's supposed to be there so that if the chain breaks it'll crash into the metal bracket and not crash into the aluminum case. Um, we don't have a hole in the case. Right. I didn't loosen this at all so we'll see if I can even get them together right now. I would be impressed. No bueno? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah we'll have to roll her back. All right. This is the uh, clip for the uh, master link chain so this slides over and clips your master link in place. Um, when you install these, or you're supposed to put it on this way, as this chain is going like this, right? Spinning the tires as you're driving. If a stick gets in here and hits it, it's just going to keep it pushed on. If you put it this way, if you're riding in weeds, debris, sticks, it can rip it out and actually cause it to fall off and can leave you stranded. So they're supposed to go on this way. Did not know that. First try. Perfect. Oh. Bro. All right, Ezra, what is your grand scheme? Oh. Uh, basically physics, chemistry, and bio. <laughs> Biohazard. Right. Well, there's a whole bunch of nasty, uh, not a whole bunch, but enough that of nasty, old, gross, rotten feel that stinks so bad that I don't even want to try and just mix it and flush it. Um, the petcock is on on. I don't want to turn it to reserve to drain it because I'm scared I'll wreck the seals. And there's a lip on the tank so I can't just flip the tank over and dump it all out because it won't come all out. So I was going to just put my mouth on it, but I didn't want to die. 
That's where the bio comes in. I was gonna suck it into the vacuum, but I didn't want to do that. And we didn't want to ruin the only fuel pump we have here, because honestly, let's be real, those are expensive anymore. Those yeah. Are electric bastards. So um, I took my Milwaukee, Wisconsin's hometown favorite fresh pack dill pickles and put two rubber hoses in there. And I put one in the fuel, and then this one's gonna go to here. And in theory, it should suck the fuel out. The fuel should fall in the drawer, and it'll suck the air, and I'll just suck it all down. <laughs> I have no idea this is gonna work. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep that around. <laughs> Imagine you can get those big pickle jars too. It does have to be a pickle jar, however, it does not have to be the Milwaukee's Wisconsin hometown favorite fresh pack dill pickles. On to the last step here for cleaning the carb. I've got my torch cleaner kit out. And I need to blow a hole through this one idle jet. This is giving me some trouble. There we go. Come on, get through there. Yeah, it's gonna take a little work, but get yourself one of these for cleaning carburetors. It is amazing. Pop all those orifices open, get your emulsion tube holes open, mains and idles and all that. And once you can shove one of these through every hole and the blows break clean through it and just fine, you know that sucker should run perfect. All right, let's finish this up. This one's got our exhaust on. I hit it with a little high temp paint. Looks pretty darn good on there. We figured since we pressure washed this and we don't know the condition of it, we better change the oil. Or lack of. Or potentially the lack thereof, exactly. Uh, these 200 engines are very simple if you don't know. Uh, all they, they don't have an oil filter, they just have a screen. So, you'll take the plug off, it'll be drain plug, a spring, and a screen, and that's it. It's awesome. Catches all the sand, but lets the metal through. Right. To go back to where it came from and re-adhere to this, you know, it's a Honda. Oh yeah, it's just pretty dirty. Oh yeah, look at all the poop. What are those? Put that back in so we can go back on the side of the piston. <laughs> <laughs> Might be the first oil change it's had in a while. She's a little chunky. Oh my lord, look at this screen. Oh, dude. Holy crap. All right, well, this was a great idea. You might want to hurry up and build that one quick. <laughs> Our other engine. Well, there we have it. The carburetor is clean. She's ready to go back on. I always like to clean the outside of my carbs as well. That way I can tell that I've been in these before. When I look in there, because shit, when you got 10 of these sitting around, you're always working on them and never have time, you forget which ones you've touched. This motor is probably so confused right now. Yeah, why am I getting new, fresh oil? What? I haven't seen that in 25 years. I don't even want that stuff. The last step. Exhaust is on. Got the good old uh, tinfoil seal in there. There's a wire holding around back here, missing a bolt. All things to fix in the future. Ezra's blowing up a temporary fuel tank over there. Oh, fantastic. I just gotta get up here and kick now. I see a problem with the table. <laughs> Me trying to start things. <laughs> that is such a mean spot to kick. Dude, it's horrible. Yeah, it's literally the best way to start these is from in front of the machine. You want to just set it on the ground? I guess so. Alright, let's get it down. <laughs> Alright, attempt two from the ground. Yeah. I found these to be a lot easier to kick from the front.
Look at that. Not half bad. She's a flat track queen. Not half bad. Anything leaking yet? Not yet. That's a good sign. We're not gonna check a second time, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Big moment of truth. Went wrong on its own fuel. said it best, you don't need a lot of money to have fun. <laughs> it looks like he's having plenty of fun. I suppose with that, uh, it's about time we end this episode. Thank you guys very much for joining us on this episode of Junkyard Digs. I hope you guys enjoyed. Quick, dirty, three-wheeler revival here today with this 200X, which definitely needs the rear bumper reinstalled, the brakes fixed, the clutch cable worked on, and a few other things. 
but I'll take care of on my own time someday. If you guys enjoyed this, check out all the other content we have right here on the channel. Big thanks to Ezra for all the help. We'll see you guys right here next week on another episode of Junkyard Digs. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go dump like 68 pounds of dirt out of my underwear. Holy shit. All right, so uh, in search of post, 200X plastics. <laughs> 83. 83. Put your bumpers on, kids. I knew that was going to happen. Damn the good it. The news is, is the exhaust paint is finally cured now. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ezra. You're welcome.